You know what I hate? When a comedy special has way too long of an introduction. Yeah, I agree. It's unnecessary. Totally. And another thing I hate is when they think of Put your hands together for DJ Demers! Never know how to wave. I'm gonna start by dedicating this set to my brother Michael. Uh, he's a pilot. Um, I mean, he was a pilot. He's dead now, but uh, plane crash actually, but. Uh, he wasn't flying at the time of the crash, but, uh, I mean, he was supposed to be, that's why I crashed, but... <laughs> he was a very bad pilot, but, um... I rest easy knowing he died doing what he loved. Uh, killing 230 innocent people. <laughs> he always said, I, um... Okay, guys, I'll leave you with this one. I, uh... <laughs> I wear hearing aids, I'm sure you guys can see them, right? If you can't, get your eyes checked. <laughs> you bunch of blind losers, but... Um, <laughs> no, I uh, hate all other disabilities, but I... Um, <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> no, I love my hearing aids. I don't want any pity or sympathy. You guys should be jealous. You should be, because I take them out when I sleep. I sleep like a baby. It's amazing. <laughs> Mwah. Eight hours a night, I wake up feeling so refreshed. Really makes you wonder who has the disability. It really does. Mm -hmm. No, it's me. I have the disability for sure. Of course. Since I take them out when I sleep, I don't use the same alarm clock you guys use. I use a vibrating alarm clock. I put it under my pillow. It vibrates so powerfully, like so powerfully. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, but it's also terrifying. So, so scary. Because all my dreams end in an earthquake. Which is not... Now, my hearing aids aren't waterproof. That bothers me. That's crazy. I don't have waterproof hearing aids. That's nuts, right? I got to take them out when I shower, when I go swimming. So, pool parties are a nightmare. Right? Not very good at the game Marco Polo. But not my game. Not a whole lot of polo happening when I'm playing that game. Lots of Marco. Lots of Marco. That's crazy though. How do we not have... We, like, we have the technology. We have waterproof everything. Like we have waterproof vibrators, but we don't have waterproof hair in it, right? I think our priorities are a little out of whack. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I understand vibrators need to be waterproof, right? I get how they work. <laughs> they're not getting wet, they're not doing their job. I understand. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I just think enough people are orgasming. We figured that out. Move a little of the R&D over to the hearing aids. That's it. That's all. <laughs> Not trying to rock the boat too much, right? Deaf people orgasm too. We do. We do. Common misconception. Uh, it's midgets you're thinking of. Um, uh, that's rude. Uh, little people don't orgasm. Little people. That's not true. I'm actually friends with a bunch of little people and they're coming all the time. It's not crazy. Can't take them anywhere. No, I um, I love my hearing. You know what I love about hearing aids now, or just being hearing impaired, or uh, hard of hearing, if you will. In this generation, th there's so many tools available, like uh, subtitles. 
Oh my goodness. Mwah! I love subtitles. They changed my life. You know what I mean? Because I used to be screwed before subtitles. My favorite subtitles when it just says indistinct chatter. <laughs> Thank God, it's not just me then, right? <laughs> Nobody heard that? Awesome. No, I used to have to rely on context so much, right? Because I can hear some stuff, obviously, but if I was missing something in a movie, I'd try to piece it together based on what else was happening before and after. But that can go wrong. That's not a foolproof plan. I'd be watching a movie with a buddy, and the guy in the movie would be like, Aah! Oh my God, what's he so angry about? My friend would be like, um, he's ejaculating. I'm like, oh my God. I was way off. Also, what kind of movie you got me watching here? <laughs> Weird. I don't hear whispering at all. Whenever somebody whispers to me, I'm like, if this is a secret, <laughs> you can rest assured. <laughs> it is very, very safe. <laughs> it's crazy. I miss out. I hated it when I was a kid because people would always want to play games that involved whispering. Like the game they always wanted to play, like when you start a new grade or something. Like, let's all get to know each other. Let's play uh, Broken Telephone. Remember that? Had a different names. Some people just called it Telephone. I always called it the game that exposed me as the deaf kid. <laughs> Horrible game. Horrible. And everyone else would be so excited. The way it works, if you don't remember, if you never played, somebody starts with the word and they whisper it, and then everybody whispers it, and you see how much it slowly transforms as it goes down the line. Yeah, when there's a kid with hearing aids playing that game, there's no slow transformation. <laughs> that word is changing drastically. <laughs> Everyone else would be so excited. The first kid would be like, I'll start, I'll start. Sandwich. The next kid's like, sandwich. The next kid, sandwich. <laughs> Get to me, I'm like, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Last kid would jump up, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> First kid's like, nah, I said sandwich. Something happened here. <laughs> I expected a bit of a deviation, but this is too much. They're all trying to figure it out. Hmm, how did this happen? Hey, kid with the hearing aids on you. Got any ideas? I said sandwich. They're like, come on, buddy. Come on, Mortal Kombat. You couldn't even hear the right amount of syllables for Christ's sake? No, I couldn't. Not any better as an adult, because I'm missing out on all the juicy information, right? When people whisper, it's always very salacious stuff. Nobody's ever whispering mundane information. You know? <laughs> Nobody's ever like, oh, it's a really beautiful day out there. Like, <laughs> Why are you whispering that? That's weird. <laughs> no, it's always the good shit, and I'm missing out on it, man. I hear, like, the first level of whispering. You know when somebody's like, kind of whispering, but there's still some volume to their voice. I hear that. But then when it gets real juicy, they go lower and I'm out. And I just end up responding to the first level that I heard and I look like a moron. You know, like a friend will come up to me and she'll be like, I was in Bermuda last week and I cheated on my husband with two guys at the same And I'm like, I have always wanted to go to Bermuda. <laughs> I had to go get a hearing test recently. Round of applause, who here has ever had a hearing test? Anybody? Oh, okay. 
Most of you, nice. That's good, it's important. I personally don't like getting hearing tests, because you know. Right. I never pass, you know, there's never, there's never any good news. And I'm like, wow, your hearing got way better. Wow, you been working out or something? Those eardrums are looking tight. That never happens. They're just like, yeah, you're still deaf. Oh, thank you very much. But, uh, but I had to go get a hearing test and my regular audiologist was on vacation. So I had to see, see this other guy and uh, he was just like a mean doc. You ever go into like a doctor's office and right away you're like, you, you're mean. How'd you get into this profession, right? He just, he had a mean, he puts me in the oldest, smallest soundproof booth I've ever been in. Like two feet by two feet. Smallest pane of glass I've ever seen. It's like a two inch window to look out of. I'm trapped in there like Hannibal Lecter or something. Just like, I got headphones on, a little clicker, and he's on the outside of the booth with the computer. Whenever he hits a button, I hear a beep in my ear, and I gotta let him know I heard it with my stupid little Jeopardy clicker, right? And they're getting lower in volume each time, the beeps. And I'm like, okay, usually I suck at this, but stay positive, today's gonna be a good day. And the first beep comes through, and it's like, beep! I'm like, crazy loud, amazing, one for one. <laughs> Killing it. Second beep comes through and it's like. <laughs> Significantly lower, but okay. Quite the drop off. Stay positive, it's okay. I didn't hear another beep. I was done after two. Ridiculous. I went premature on my hearing test, right? I had too much pride to admit it, so then like the rest of the test was just me trying to guess when he was hitting his button. Finally, he was like, oh, DJ, the test has been done for five minutes. Uh, I've just been checking my emails out here if you want to stop hitting the button. <laughs> what a mean dude. This is the meanest thing he did. He goes, okay, so that was the test with your hearing aids in. Uh, why don't you take them out now? We'll do the same test again. I'm like, wow. Well, I just heard two beeps <laughs> with them in. I think uh, we can probably extrapolate based on that data. You want to give me the zero? I'd be okay with that. <laughs> give me a negative number. I don't care. Just let me out of this booth, right? Why is it padlocked anyway? That's weird. <laughs> what a mean doctor. You never see any other doctor do that? You never see like a guy with no legs go into his doctor's office? Doctor's like, oh, hey there, Jimmy. How's it going? Why don't you uh, just take off those prosthetics and we'll do a quick running test here. If you want. <laughs> Quit your crying, Jimmy, it's running time. <laughs> Some mean doctor. When I first started doing comedy, I didn't want to do any jokes about my hearing aids. I honestly did not want to do a single, I didn't want to be the hearing aid guy. I don't want to be pigeonholed like that, right? People be like, oh, the hearing aid guy, what a gimmick, right? Eh? I want that to, I was watching this interview with a really famous comedian. He talked about how he became famous for doing a certain type of joke. When he tried to do other material, people didn't want to hear it because they pigeonholed him. As soon as I heard that, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing any jokes about my hearing aids. Ain't nobody putting this guy in a box. So I said, I meant it. Then a couple minutes later in the same interview, uh, he mentioned how last year he made $20 million. And that changed my perspective quite a bit. When I heard that part of the interview, I screamed so loud my hearing aids broke. Because I wear hearing aids, I have a... I have a... Thank you. I assume you guys were clapping. I'm very deaf, I don't know what's going on. Anyways, guys, uh, I wear hearing aids and... Um, Come on, that's $20 million, you kidding me? 
not leaving that kind of money on the table. <laughs> Honestly, for 20 mil, for 20 million dollars, I'd go full Helen Keller. I would. <laughs> I'm after that Helen Keller money, baby. Mm. Oh, yeah, could you imagine? $20 million, full Helen Keller, the things I'd do. I'd buy myself a yacht, be out in the middle of the open water, taking in all the beautiful smells. Mm. What a dream. Me and, uh, me and my partner recently broke up. Got really quiet in here for a second, huh? We oh, did it. No, it did. Um, I wear hearing aid, but I... Uh, I'm the hearing aid guy, but I know why... Uh, I know why it got quiet, right? It's because I said partner. As soon as somebody says partner, and you don't know them well, you can't even focus on the rest of the conversation. <laughs> You're just trying to solve the mystery. <laughs> Partner, huh? I don't care either way, man. I just need to know. You're all looking at me trying to crack the case right now. I can feel it. Well, he's kind of got a lisp, but that could be the hearing impairment. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to attribute that to. No. No, me and, uh, me and my girlfriend broke up to clear up that mystery, because um, I realized I was gay. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm, uh, I'm not gay, uh, but my boyfriend is. <laughs> no, he's not gay either. We're just having a good time, but... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you. But honestly, guys, I'm uh, I'm straight. Uh, I'm straight up into the dick, and um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a straight man. I'm straight. That's the end of it. I'm not going to take you on that roller coaster anymore. I'm. I'm straight, but I have done that joke uh, before where I've left it ambiguous, you know, on TV or live even, and, uh, you know, I've had uh, many gay men approach me <laughs> who wanted to crack the case personally, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so. I'm not gay, but let it be known, if I was, I would be swimming in dicks right now, all right? <laughs> Is that the right stroke? I don't know. That seems... <laughs> Brush stroke through dick seems wrong. Dumb. I love when somebody says they're cool with homosexuals, but then the next words out of their mouth like indicate otherwise. I was talking to a girl one time. She said, I'm totally cool with gay people, as long as they don't touch each other or act gay. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you're totally cool with gay people, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, I relate, because I got a similar thing. Like, I'm totally cool with little people, as long as they're always on stilts or wearing platform shoes, you know? <laughs> but I love them. They're the best. I just hate when they act all midgety, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know I've been talking about little people a lot so far, but it's the way it works. When you have one disability, you're allowed to make fun of one other disability, so... <laughs> I chose little people, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> a couple misunderstandings where they rushed to stage and kneecapped me, but... <laughs> didn't even see them coming, you know? But, uh... I don't feel great about that joke, but, um... You guys laugh, so you should all be ashamed of yourselves as well. <laughs> We're all in it together. I'm moving to America soon, because, uh, I looked at the current political climate, and I said, now's the time. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Just feels right, you know, I uh, want to help make America great again, so. <laughs> now, I learned something uh, interesting about America recently. You know, up until very recently, it was illegal for gay men in America to donate blood, which is bullshit, right? That's crazy, discriminatory. But they changed the law recently where gay men are now allowed to donate blood with one little caveat. Gay men can donate blood as long as they haven't had sex in one year. Right? That's ridiculous. That's even more bullshit. Honestly, if you're not having sex for one whole year, that's a lifestyle choice I can't get behind. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I have no problem getting a blood transfusion from a gay man, but I'll be damned if I have loser blood coursing through my veins. No way. So yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm recently single and I'm 30, I'm 30 years old and single at 30 is uh, it's a weird because things have changed, you know, I was in a relationship for a few years. I actually uh, recently just got, I went and got new hearing aids, right, which is crazy when you get new hearing aids, everything's so different, we've all been there. And, um, <laughs> and I got this new device with my hearing aids, it's called a Roger pen and the way it works, it looks like a pen, a bit bigger, it's kind of like silver and it's got a little microphone on the end of it. And the way it works is if you're in a really loud environment, you can like kind of like put it close to the person, it'll pick up their voice and kind of drown out the surrounding noise. Really cool invention. But I said to my audiologist, I said, when do you actually envision me using this device? And he said, well, let's say like you're at like a nightclub. <laughs> and you're talking to a girl and you're having a hard time hearing her. <laughs> Just kind of like hold it close to her face. Yeah, I see that going very well, for sure, yeah. Can you imagine just at a nightclub, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, just talking to the pen, I'm a journalist. <laughs> and he's like, well, you don't have to say it's like a pen. You don't even have to say it's like a microphone. You could come up with something cooler. Like you could say it's like a e-cigarette, like a vape. <laughs> yeah, that's way better. <laughs> you know how the ladies are going wild for those guys who vape, right? <laughs> Honestly, on the list of disabilities, I'd rather be a guy with hearing aids than a guy who vapes, you know? <laughs> And what am I supposed to do if she is into vaping? Can you man? It's like, oh, and she's like, cool, is that a vape? Can I have some? No! <laughs> My vape. <laughs> wow, this guy vapes and he's an asshole? What a catch. <laughs> no, I don't go to nightclubs at all. I used to go when I was younger, but now I'm not even... I'm never, I can't hear a thing in a nightclub, literally nothing. Like if I wanna like try to woo a lady, I'd wanna be in a place where I can kind of hear her, converse, make her laugh, not use the word woo, things like that. <laughs> and, uh, nightclubs, I'm screwed. Literally, I'm not exaggerating, I hear zero. I just get in there, just do, 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 do. I'm like, All right, can't dance and can't hear, yeah. <laughs> really in my element. And they all have those black lights that make everything glow. And the inner part of my hearing aid is white. <sighs> Hard to look cool when your ears are glowing. It's a tough one to overcome. There's, uh, there's no cool excuse for that, you know? The girls are like, are those hearing aid? No, uh, Bluetooth, yeah. <laughs> Expecting a few calls at the club tonight, yeah. <laughs> Busy guy. That's why I got him in both ears, yeah. It's 
a blue teeth candidate. <laughs> Nobody's buying that. No, when I did used to go to the nightclubs, I just did the smile and nod, that's all. The whole night, I'd do my stupid little dance, smile, nod, throw out words that made it seem like I know what's going on, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. You got it. <laughs> and then I'd watch people's face. If they went down in their emotions, I'd follow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For sure, you got it. And I'd get away with it, because nobody gives a shit what you're talking about at a club. Everyone's just there to hump on people's legs or whatever the hell they're doing. It's a nightmare. But my friends, they always knew I was just doing the smiling now. And they're not good people at all. So I would always find out afterwards that they were just messing with me the whole night. Be talking to a group of girls. My one buddy would be like, this is DJ. He uh, loves having sex with dead people. <laughs> Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> My other buddy's like, how's, how's that possible, DJ? I thought you were impotent. <laughs> you got it, you got it. I don't normally dance that long, but when you're feeling it, right? I don't even know what music's playing in my head right now. What the hell am I dancing to? No, man. It was the worst, too, because when I thought I'd heard it correctly, it would always have disastrous effects. I just had to do the smile and nod because too many misunderstandings would happen. Be talking to a girl, and she'd be like, get away from me, you creep. And I would hear, like, it is you with whom I'd like to sleep. Like, oh, no. She wants to have sex and she speaks old Victorian English? Nice. <laughs> no, I like, uh, I like going out to bars a lot. I'm, I, I, I drink a lot. I don't want to say I have a drinking problem. You know, you don't want to throw that around, but you know, I, uh, I love it and I'll do it every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> but, um, But I like to drink at bars and stuff. People f weird me out. I like people generally, but I don't really trust them. So what I do is I put like, if I'm hanging out at a bar, I'll put like a napkin on top of my drink or like a coaster. You guys know this movie, right? You put it there, you turn around, you talk to somebody, you look back, coaster's still there. Awesome, nobody's tampered with your drink. Smart move. But uh, what I'm noticing a lot of people doing is they're like putting like a napkin on their drink and then they're, they're like going outside for a cigarette or going to the bathroom. Yeah, the effectiveness of this technique <laughs> is greatly diminished when you're giving the creeps five to 10 minutes to work with, you know? They're gonna figure out your little Fort Knox contraption in that amount of time. They're never gonna be like, okay, they left their drink unattended, okay, I'll remove the napkin, put this roofie in, and I guess I'll eat the napkin now, I don't know. <laughs> Always do that. No, it's gonna end badly. Also, guys, don't ever do this. I've made this mistake. If a girl leaves her drink unattended uh, without like a coaster on it, do not put one on for her. <laughs> that does not put their mind at ease at all. <laughs> they get back in, they're like, I don't remember putting a coaster on my drink. Like, oh yeah, no, I, uh, I put it on for you. <laughs> a lot of weirdos in here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm 30, I turned 30 a few months ago, and thank you. That's, uh, I, feel, I feel like I'm getting older, you know, I feel it now. But, you know, you can't complain about feeling old at 30. You try to complain at 30, some 40-year-old will come out of nowhere and be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can't do it, you can't complain. But I feel old, I'm groaning all the time now. I groan when I get in a, like, into a vehicle. <laughs> like I open the door, I'm like, ugh, what the hell? When I get out, it's like rewind, like, you know? <laughs> Just waiting for the day when I start groaning when I pee, you know? At the, at the urinal. 
I'm not trying to belittle anybody who might be in that situation, but holy shit. <laughs> you are freaking the rest of us out so much. <laughs> I don't know how it is for women, but guys, we've all been in the bathroom where you got a guy beside you at the urinal, and they always have one arm up, too. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Feel so bad, you know? Just trying to urinate here without the grim specter of death beside me. <laughs> That's awful. I can't turn to the right anymore. Muscles on the right side, because I hear better out of my left ear. My right ear at this point is just pretty much ornamental. And uh, <laughs> you know, just keeping the symmetry. But, um, so whenever somebody calls me from behind, I always turn to the left, never to the right. So now after 30 years of doing that, like the muscles on the right side of my neck are like atrophy and they're like freezing up on me. That's the most I can turn to the right. What is that, maybe 70 degrees? Whatever it is, it's not good, you know? Strictly from a survival perspective, you want that maximum rotation. So, so I've been trying to stretch my neck out, but here's a little piece of advice to you guys. Do not stretch your neck in a public place. It creeps the hell out of people. It's, the creepiest thing you can do. I'll just be like sitting in the food court at the mall. I'm like, oh, just sitting here. I got nothing to do. Now would be a good time to stretch my neck out. Here we go. <laughs> guy beside me, he's like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Gonna murder me or something? I'm like, oh my God, he thinks I'm staring at him. That's why this is so creepy. Okay, I got the perfect solution. This will make it way less creepy. Here we go. <laughs> Just as creepy, probably more creepy. I'm the creepiest guy in the food court, which is a hard title to take home. <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel, I feel like I'm getting, I feel the age starting to, because when you're like in your 20s, anything you do wrong, everyone's like, oh, what a youthful transgression, right? Once you're in your 30s, everyone's like, oh, look at that grown ass man fucking up. <laughs> you should really know better. But you can't complain. You complain at 30, a 40 year old will tell you to shut up. 40 year old can't complain because a 60 year old will tell them to shut up. 60 year old can't even really complain because an 80 year old will tell them to shut up. That's the only reason we care about the oldest person on the planet, right? Because they're the only person who's allowed to complain. <laughs> Some like 119 year old man living in Oregon. Oh, I'm so old, my body hurts. And everyone's like, that is correct. <laughs> He's very old. You have the floor, old man. But even, uh, even he gets screwed over because some like 124 year old lady comes out of nowhere. You shut the hell up! <laughs> I thought I heard it. You're right, that was incredible voice work. <laughs> That's what I'm known for. And you know where that 124 year old lady's from, right? These people who live forever, they're all from these like, the same place, they're all from these like remote Japanese islands. These people live forever over there. We send scientists over to learn their secrets. How do you all live so, so old, so long? They're like, oh, we eat nothing but seaweed. Oh. Dying at 75 doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> Thank you for that. No, you know, I, uh, I know we're all gonna die uh, tonight, but um, <laughs> lock the doors! <laughs> I don't want to die in an embarrassing way, you know? Like, that's my worst fear, like choking to death. Can you imagine if that's how you went out? Choking to death? What an idiot, huh? <laughs> oh, how'd he die? Oh, uh, you know that thing you've done a million times in your life? <laughs> Chewing and swallowing, yeah. <laughs> he just couldn't get the hang of it that one time. <laughs> paid the ultimate price. <laughs> Humiliating. If I was choking to death in a public place, I would decline hell. But like, let it happen. I deserve this. <laughs> it's my time. I almost choked to death a few weeks ago. It was so scary because I was home alone. 
when you start choking and you're home alone, it's like the scariest thing in the world. This was extra scary because I wasn't even eating. I was <laughs> drinking a glass of ice water. Ice cube got lodged in my throat. I'm like, no way, not like this, come on. <laughs> melt, melt. <laughs> I knew if I could last like 20 more seconds, this instrument of death would turn into the very substance I require to live. <laughs> And the whole time, I'm just like, if I actually die right now, whoever finds my body is going to have no idea what happened to me. <laughs> they just show up, see my stupid dead body there. I don't know. I mean, he was hydrated, that's for sure. <laughs> Natural causes, that's what they'd write. Anytime you're looking at an autopsy report and you see the person died of natural causes, that person choked on an ice cube. And that's what happened. <laughs> Remember that the next time you're perusing the autopsies. <laughs> I just want to accomplish more with my life before I die. I'm wasting so much time. I'm, I'm on my phone all day. Round of applause. Who here feels like they're addicted to their phone? You guys feel? <laughs> The whole room, that's crazy. We're in too deep, man, it's nuts. It's cra I can't do anything. I'll wake up at like three in the morning and before I can do anything, I'll check my phone. I'll check like my Facebook, my Twitter, my email. My email? What email am I getting at three in the morning? That's important enough that I need to check. Nothing, ever. I'm never gonna wake up at 3 a.m. and be like, okay, let's check the emails here. Oh, I got an email from my buddy Steve. Dear DJ, I'm in a lot of trouble right now. I thought the email would be the best form of communication. In my time of need. Oh, wow. Please respond by 3.05. These guys mean business. Sincerely, Steve. Live, love, laugh. Never gonna happen. <laughs> I hate these people who email you and just sign off with their first initial. You know these assholes? <laughs> Probably some of you in the room right now. <laughs> My buddy Kevin, man. I'll be emailing with Kevin and he just signed off with K. I'm like, don't disrespect me like that, Kevin. Okay? <laughs> I know you're not that busy. Write, write your entire first name, you son of a bitch. I like to get back at him. I write a totally unnecessarily long reply. I'm talking like eight or nine paragraphs. And then I just sign off with my first initial. But it's a huge slap in the face coming from me. Because my name's DJ, it's only two letters. I just write the D. Would have loved to include the J, but I'm really buried in my work over here, Kev. <laughs> no, I can't do anything without, I can't even go. Have you guys tried going to the bathroom without your phone lately? Wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> very, very scary. I was at a friend's place. I didn't realize until I got into the bathroom that I had left my phone charging in his kitchen. And uh, I get on the toilet, I sit down, I'm like, okay, I'll just check Facebook, Twit, oh no. <laughs> I guess I'll just think? <laughs> Reflect, how the hell? I panicked, I started reading the ingredients on the shampoo bottles. On the <laughs> it's when you know you're in too deep. No, I can't do. One time I was peeing at a urinal, looking at my phone like an idiot. Phone slips out of my hand. Yeah, into my own urine. And my first instinct was like, oh my God, this is hilarious. I would love to tweet about this. It's the worst. And you know that trick where you put your phone in rice to get the moisture out of it? That, that, that trick does not work when it's urine. and the rice tastes awful afterwards. <laughs> mm -mm.
No, I had to make a huge lifestyle change after that day. Big changes. From that day forward, now I just sit when I pee, every time. <laughs> Straight up, ass on the seat, dick in the bowl, I'm right down there, I love it. It's the best, no shame. Anybody else, you ever sit when you pee? No, never? Come on. <laughs> no? Real tough guy, huh? <laughs> Me sit when I pee, no way. So manly, I stand when I shit. <laughs> Nobody ever wants to admit it, man. It's the best. It's the greatest. I'm not saying like out in public bathrooms, although I won't lie, if it's a clean enough bathroom, I sit there as well. But uh, I'm talking at home, you sit down, you take a load off, right? The best part about sitting when you pee is when you're sitting there and you thought you just had to pee. Okay? And then you're like, ooh. Something's brewing, right? Mm hmm The surprise poo. It's the greatest. It's amazing. In terms of like life's greatest moment, it's like maybe your wedding day, the birth of your firstborn, and every surprise poo you've ever had. That's the order. I love it. I think we're getting a little too cutesy with our bathroom naming schemes, I'll tell you that much. I know, I don't want to ruffle too many feathers in here, but uh, it's crazy, right? We're, everyone's getting all, like, if I'm in your bar or restaurant and I need to use the facilities, what I want to see on the bathroom door is either men or women. This is no time for creativity, I need information. <laughs> I was having drinks at a bar called the Fox and the Fiddle. I had to use the bathroom. I walk down the hall, the first door that I see, it says foxes, foxes. I'm like, I don't know what to do with this information <laughs> at all. Foxes, fox is like a feminine kind of term too, right? We use it for women. Like, oh, look at that foxy lady. She's a real fox. People are still saying that, right? <laughs> So I'm thinking foxes must be the women's room. I don't want to take any chances. So I walk down the hall to look at the other door. That one says vixens. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not a complete moron. I'm guessing vixens is the women's room. So I walk back down the hall to the fox's door again. I'm just standing that side of it like an idiot. I'm like, well, I got to take the plunge. I got to see. So I open the door a little bit. I peek in. I see some urinals in there. Amazing. Solved the mystery. Foxes equals men. Took me like 45 seconds, not a huge deal, but still, my point is, I gotta be a goddamn zoologist to take a dump in this joint. <laughs> not right. Had a horrible experience in a bathroom recently. I was having uh, lunch at Quiznos, and uh, not bragging, just the life I live. And, uh, <laughs> and sometimes you want it toasted, right? And I. Um, so I had to use the bathroom there, so I go into the bathroom and then I go into my own individual stall, as they often are, and uh, I'm sitting there and I look and the crack in the door of my stall was like three quarters of an inch wide. You ever been in, so I'm sitting there and everyone who came into the bathroom could just clearly see me on the toilet. And... Yeah, how's it going? Hey. I'm just shitting here if you want to <laughs> stop looking directly into my eyes, yeah. <laughs> I can see you as well. We're looking at each other right now. I was afraid to wipe because I didn't want to be all dangly and vulnerable. <laughs> Pinching off early. I'm not talking like... I'm not talking like I could kind of see people. Like I could see full eyeballs looking at me. <laughs> like the T-Rex from Jurassic Park watching me shit. <laughs> Who designed this bathroom? Who's like, yeah, we're thinking an open concept kind of design. <laughs> Gonna be no secrets in this quiz now for sure. Real community building bathroom. I love doing comedy. I, I travel a lot for it. I fly a lot. You know when you're like on a plane and uh, you know somebody around you farted because you can just tell you're sitting in the mist, you know? 
Yeah, that's me. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Always. I'm nervous, man. I don't like flying. I get nervous. You guys scared to fly at all? Yeah? You are? Thanks, man. Nobody, everyone's always like, no, I'm not scared to fly. I'm like, I feel like you're not paying attention, you know? <laughs> Whenever people are like, no way. I'm like, yeah, what? It's so scary. Like, it's a plane. Every flight I get on, I'm just like, I just accept when I get on. I'm like, okay, probably going to die. That's all. <laughs> it's okay, but probably going to die. My friend was like, well, he tried to put my mind at ease with statistics. He was like, well, you know, there's only like a one in 11 million chance of your flight going down. Well, I mean, I don't know much about statistics, but I know I fly enough that I'm just getting closer to that one, you know? <laughs> it doesn't mean. I'm like not white knuckling it the whole time, but like the first little bump of turbulence, I can laugh that off. We're like, oh, hoo -hoo, ha, oh. that was kind of funny. Second bump, I'm like, this is the one. <laughs> Everyone's like, calm down, stop yelling out, this is the one, you know? <laughs> Freaking my kids out over here. I'm like, okay. I'll stop, but your kids need to know, this is the one. We're going down. <laughs> I don't understand why I'm not given a parachute when I get on an airplane. <laughs> Boggles my mind. It seems like a no-brainer. They should be like, welcome aboard. And of course, here's your parachute. <laughs> Things go wrong, you're going to want this. It, it blows my, you know how the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats? And that blows our minds now? Like, wow, what an egregious oversight. That's how we're going to view the lack of parachutes in 50 years. I'm going to be talking to my grandkids one day, and they're going to be like, oh, honestly, Grandpa, you guys didn't have parachutes when you flew? And I'll be like, no. And they'll be like, oh, like, they weren't invented yet? Oh, no, they were. For quite some time. Ridiculous, give me a parachute. My friend was like, oh, well, you don't have parachutes, but there's other safety devices. Like, you know, your seat cushion, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. Oh, thank God. Oh. The seat cushion floats, oh, that's amazing. Because uh, I was really worried that when we crashed into the ocean from 30,000 feet in the air, I was really worried that my corpse wouldn't have anything to float on, but... <laughs> a seat cushion, that's great, thank you. What the hell are we talking about? Give me a parachute, you know what I mean? I'm not saying I have to have access to the parachute the whole time, right? You, you, you don't want a jittery guy like me having access to a parachute. <laughs> I get it. First little bump, I will be deploying it, 100%. <laughs> Keep them locked up in a closet. That's all I'm saying. A closet full of parachutes. No brainer. I get scared before I even get on the airplane. I was flying recently. Had a flight at 1.05 p.m. I get up to the ticket counter, and the ticket agent, she says to me, you're on the 1.05 flight, but we actually have one seat available on the 12.05 flight one hour earlier. Would you like that one instead? I'm like, of course. Thank you so much. And then the second I switched, I was like, shit. This is how it happens, right? <laughs> Whenever a plane goes down, you always hear about it in the news the next day. There's always that one poor soul that they mention. He was actually supposed to be on the 105 flight. But <laughs> he switched at the last second and now he's super dead. And I was like, no, stop thinking so negative. The flight you switched to is not going to crash. The flight you were supposed to be on is the one that's going to crash. <laughs> Those people are all going to die. Think positive. <laughs> I perform on cruise ships, too. What a nightmare. <laughs> people think it must be fun. Oh, God, no. It's the worst. It's awful. I don't even know how I got the gig. Uh, there's always two comedians on a ship at any given time. Every other comedian I've worked with, they're all like at least 50 or 60 years old. I think they were just like, well, you're not 60, but you wear hearing aids close enough. <laughs> you're on your way. No, I don't like them at all. Because I I there's a stigma around being a cruise ship comedian. You know, there's a perception that cruise ship comedians are... Uh, awful and uh, it's very true 
Um, Cause I start, I started writing jokes that only work on cruise ships. You know, like, oh, uh, did we just hit choppy waters or is this show rocking? <laughs> or hey, did you guys hit the buffet today, you disgusting slobs? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Uh, oh, it's the worst. I'm so scared of becoming one too long. I met a cruise ship comedian. He said he'd been doing the ships for 23 years. And, uh, and I said, oh my God, like, like, what do you do back home when you're doing gigs? And he's like, oh, I haven't done a land gig in 21 years. <laughs> Excuse me, land gig? <laughs> That's the scariest term I've ever heard in my life. gig oh my god so scary and I just hate myself when I'm on the I gotta wear a name tag the entire time 24 7 I'm not allowed to take the name tag off you know how hard it is to feel like a credible artist when you're wearing a name tag <laughs> and my name's DJ something happens to people's brains when they see DJ on a name tag they just forget what name tags do you know honestly at least 40 or 50 times a day people come up to me and they're like you're a DJ I'm like, no, just, it's just my name. Like, oh, that's cool too. <laughs> Even other employees on the ship who themselves are also wearing name tags. <laughs> you know, forget, they'll come up and like, oh my God, you're a DJ? I'm like, yeah, you nailed it. And you are a John? Cool. <laughs> nice. And I'm scared every night I go to sleep because I'm sleeping in this little like four by four cabin, no windows, pitch black. And like if something happens in the middle of the night, right? If the ship runs into one of those Caribbean icebergs or whatever. <laughs> I'm not gonna hear the captain come on and make an announcement that we need to evacuate. I'm just dead, right? That's very scary. Every night I go to sleep, I'm just like, Jesus, take the wheel, you know? <laughs> or the helm or whatever, just don't let me die. But, but the last cruise I was on, I was like, I should be a bit more proactive about this situation, not be so content to go to my watery grave. So I uh, went to talk to the safety office and let them know about my unique situation. I walked down the hall and I knocked on the door and the head safety officer opened the door, a uh, big Italian man by the name of Roberto. And he opened the door like eight inches and I'm like, hey Roberto, just wanted to let you know, I wear hearing aids, so you know, if something goes down in the middle of the night, like the ship, for example. Um, <laughs> I'm dead, like I'm dead. Is there some sort of list you can put me on of cabins that you check on in the event of an emergency? Uh, <clears throat> and he said, uh, there is no such list. And I said, oh, okay, well, uh, that seems like a bit of an oversight, but um, I said, maybe if I told you my cabin number, you could personally come and check on me? Uh, and then he just mentioned something about Darwinism and shut the door in my face, so. <laughs> yeah. Thought that was harsh, but fair. Yeah. <laughs> Respect. Even if I, not, even if I uh, never do another cruise ship ever again, uh, I'll feel good because I got uh, one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me. Uh, happened on a cruise ship. So basically, I'm doing this show, and uh, I'm talking about pornography for like a solid 20 minutes. <laughs> Giving the cruise folks what they want, right? <laughs> and uh, so I finish the show, and then the night ends, and the next day the boat docks in Cozumel, Mexico. Nice little beat town. 4,000 people get off the boat, ravage the land, get back on the boat. <laughs> and, uh, Nice little microcosm of colonialism in one day. And so we're in Cozumel, Mexico. And the other comedian on the ship, he tells me, there's a bar in Cozumel, and it's called Three Amigos. And the manager of this bar, his name's Chalo, and he loves the cruise ship comedian. So if we go there and we tell him we're the comedians, we won't pay for a drink all day. And I'm like, we didn't have any shows that night, so I'm like, of course, let's 
go to Three Amigo and have a few beverages. And we go in at noon, and uh, I meet Charlo, gregarious, great guy. Right away, he gives me a hug. Comedian, give, come here, tequila shot. Right away, 12 noon. And uh, so we do a tequila shot. Fast forward three hours, and I've had like nine or 10 tequila shots. Yeah, I ate lunch too, but still, I was too drunk. I don't like being that drunk, but he, Charlo kept being like another one. I'm not gonna be rude to Charlo, right? And uh, so 3 p.m. comes around, I'm pretty drunk, and I get a tap on my shoulder, and I turn around, and it's a woman, maybe 50 or 55 years old, and uh, she says to me, you're the comedian from last night. I'm like, yeah, and she's like, just wanted to let you know I was at the show with my daughter. We loved it, and uh, just wanted to let you know my daughter loves porn. Yeah, that's a weird thing for you to say to me. Um, <laughs> weird thing for you to know about your daughter, for sure. Um, she says, will you come say hello to her? It would really make her day. And I said, for sure. I'm just talking to Chalo right now, but I'll be over in a couple minutes. She goes, okay. She walks away. And then uh, a few minutes later, Chalo and I are wrapping up. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go find that uh, woman and her porno-loving daughter. And... Uh, <laughs> So I walk through three amigos looking for him, and uh, I find him. I find the mom, and I walk up, and I look at her daughter, and her daughter's like 16 years old. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not really going to do this, am I? And then the 10 tequila shots were like, absolutely, yeah. It's exactly what you're going to do right now. So I look at the mom, hello, and I look at the daughter, I'm like, hi, I, uh, I hear that, uh, <laughs> I hear that you're a fan of pornography. And she says, uh, no, what? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. I'm like, oh, I look at the mom, and the mom's like, no, she's not. Why are you saying that? She is not. And I'm like, why are you saying that? What the? And I just like moonwalked away from the table. <laughs> I was so confused. I go back over to Shalo. I'm like, Shalo, I don't know what the hell just happened over there. I get over there and the daughter's like 16, way too young. She tells me she doesn't even like porn. I go to the mom for backup. She throws me under the bus. I don't know what the hell's happening. As I'm telling them that, I get a tap on my shoulder and I turn around and it's the mother, but uh, it's the original mother. So, I totally remembered what she looked like wrong and just went to some random table. <laughs> so there was just a mom and her teenage daughter enjoying a lovely afternoon in Cozumel, Mexico. And some 30-year-old pervert stumbled up to their table. I hear you love porn. Thank you so much, guys. You've been absolutely amazing. Thank you. You guys are the best. Thank you so much.